All right, everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. We only have a few more videos to do to finish up our game of tic-tac-toe. If you've been following along up to this point, you should have a working game. There's just a few things missing to complete all the rules for tic-tac-toe. Now, in the last video, we showed you how to create some buttons that allow the players to change who starts the game of tic-tac-toe. In this lesson, we want to handle what happens when the players tie in tic-tac-toe. So let's get started. All right, so here we have our project open inside of Unity, and the first thing that we want to do is create what will be displayed when the players tie their game of tic-tac-toe. There's two visual elements that we're going to be creating. The first is going to be a big C that overlaps on top of our tic-tac-toe grid. Now, the reason why we want to have a big C is because when players tie a game of tic-tac-toe, that's also known as what's called cat. And so the C will stand for getting a cat. And then the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the text that appears at the top of the screen so that it'll say something like cat or maybe even draw. And that will be all that we need to display to the screen when the players tie a game of tic-tac-toe. So to create the first element, what we need to do is go to our canvas game object, and I'm going to expand that. I then want to find our winner panel because we can use the winner panel to also display what happens when the players tie a game. And so I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to enable it so that we can see what we're creating. The next thing that I'm going to do is expand this game object, and then I'm going to right click on this game object and go down to UI and then select image. Now previously I went ahead to create this image of a C with a transparent background. Now if you don't have any way of creating a similar image or finding one online, you can always use a text game object instead of an image game object. In the near future we will also try to provide a way for you to download this image online. Now the reason why I'm using this image instead of a plain text game object is because Unity's text game objects only allow you to have a font size up to 300 pixels. Once you hit 300, you then have to scale up the game object itself in order to get that font any bigger. But as soon as you start scaling up the game object itself, the text becomes blurry and pixelated. And so I'm going to try this using just an image of a C rather than a text of a C. So the first thing that I'm going to do with our newly created image game object is change the name of it in the hierarchy. So we could change this to something like cat image. The next thing that I want to do is size up this image game object so that it overlaps our tic-tac-toe grid. And so our tic-tac-toe grid has a width of 800 and a height of 800, and then it has a Y position of negative 75. We can then grab our C image and drag it into the source image field of our image component. I'm then going to change the color of this image to be a solid red. Now if I want this red to be the same red as those other winning lines that we use, what I can do is I can select one of those winning line game objects, and then click on the color field, and click on this Add New Preset button down at the bottom. I can then go back to our cat image and select the color and then select that swatch. Now if I want our game to display some text above the tic-tac-toe grid that says something like cat or draw, I can actually just use our winning text game object that we've already created. So all we have to do before we start coding is hide the cat image that we've just now created and then rehide our winner panel. Now let's open up our game controller script inside of Visual Studios. Once you have your script open inside of Visual Studios, the first thing that we're going to do is create a variable to hold this image game object that we've just now created. And so down at the bottom of our variables, I'm going to type public, then game object, and this can just be our cat, cat image. Now I already have a variable for our winner text game object so that we can update what that text says when the players tie a game of tic-tac-toe. 
Now that we've created these variables, let's go ahead and create a function that we can call when there's a tie game. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to create a void function and we can call it cat parentheses and curly braces. Now the first thing that we want to do inside this function is enable the winner panel. So I'm going to call our winner panel variable that I'm going to say set active and set it to true. The next thing that we want to do is enable that big C game object that we've just now created. So I'm going to type cat image dot set active and then set it to true. The last thing that we want to do inside this function is update what the text will say above our tic-tac-toe grid. And so that is our winner text game object. And then I'm going to access the text field by saying dot text. And then I can set it equal to quotes cat. Now we need to think about when we want this cat function to be called in our script. Now, in the game of tic-tac-toe, there's only one possible way for the players to tie a game of tic-tac-toe, and that is by having all nine spaces on their tic-tac-toe grid filled in without having three in a row. And so the way that we can do that is within our tic-tac-toe button function, we are incrementing our turn count. Now, if the turn count equals nine, then we know that all the spaces are then filled. But there's a possibility that someone could win a game of tic-tac-toe on that ninth play. And so we know that we want to call our cat function if no one's won the game on that ninth play. And so the place that we want to call this cat function is after we call our winner check function. And so inside this if statement, we can then type our cat function, but we want to make sure that we only run this function if there are some other conditions met. And so the first condition that we want to make sure is met is that first off, the turn counter has to equal nine. So turn counter equals nine. The other condition that we need to check before we call our cat function is that we need to make sure that no one has won the game of tic-tac-toe. And so to do this, we actually need to make some changes to our winner check function. And so I'm going to scroll down to that function, which is located right here. And the change that we need to make is that we need to change the return type so that rather than being void, it returns a bool value. So I'm going to change the void to say bool. We then need to have all the possible exits to our function return a value either true or false. And so inside this if statement where we have this return, we need to return the value of true. We also need to add a return statement at the end of this function. So outside this if statement and outside this for loop, we're going to add the line return false. And so if this condition is true, we will then return the value of true but if we reach the end of this function, we will then return the value of false because no solution was found. So now that we have these lines added in and we've changed the return type of our winner check function to be bool, let's scroll back up to our tic-tac-toe button function. And where we call our winner check function, we need to create a new local bool variable. And so I'm going to type bool, and then we're going to give this variable the name of is winner and we can set it equal to the return value of that function. Now we can add in another condition to this if statement here where we're checking to see if turn count equals 9 and we want to and these conditions together so I'm going to type 2 and percents and then we want to check to see if is winner equals false. And so if turn count equals nine and is winner equals false, then we know that all the spaces of the tic-tac-toe grid have been filled in, but there was never three in a row found. And that's when we want to call our cat function to display the big C on top of our tic-tac-toe grid and change the text value so that it says cat. Now there's one more line of code that we need to add before we save this script and go back to Unity. And this line of code is within our rematch function. 
Now, because we're doing additional stuff with our cat function, we need to add this line of code to reset what our cat function's doing. And so at the bottom of our rematch function, what we need to do is disable the cat image. So I'm going to type cat image dot set active and set it to false semicolon. Now the other thing that our cat function is doing is enabling the winner panel, but we're already taking care of that with this line of code here. Now the last thing that our cat function is doing is changing the value of the text that appears at the top of the screen. But we don't need to do anything about that because every time that text appears, we are updating it to be current. And so whether a player wins the game or we tie it with a cat, that's when we are changing the value of that text to either say player X wins or player O wins or cat. Now that we've added this line of code, let's go ahead and save our game and go back to Unity. Once you're back in Unity, there's one thing that we need to do before we test our game, and that is to set the value of the cat image variable inside our game controller script. And so I'm going to select our cat image game object and drag it into that field there. And then we can go ahead and test our game. Now I need to be careful that I mark all nine spaces without having any three in a row. So I'm going to see if I can do that. And there we go. I was able to mark all nine spaces without having any three in a rows, and we were able to have the C display on top of our tic-tac-toe grid, and up at the top it says cat. Now let's go ahead and hit rematch, and that looks like everything is being set back to the way it was. And let's play through our game and have the X player win. And there we go, we're making sure that the C is not still visible because we're disabling it when we hit the rematch button. Now that's everything that we're going to make in this video on how to create tic-tac-toe inside of Unity. I hope you were able to follow along and that everything made sense. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified when we publish new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>